So a couple of days ago, Apple just announced a new iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Pro. And I do feel like the iPhone 14 Pro is a generational shift for the iPhone. So in this video, we're going to get into all the reasons why I think the iPhone 14 Pro is such a big change for iPhones in general. So the iPhone 14 Pro now has an always on display that's capable of going from 1 hertz all the way up to 120 hertz. So this is a huge jump in terms of display capability. And there's a couple of really cool things that Apple's done. Because the screen can go down to one hertz, the always on display is very power efficient and allows you to have a lot more information on the screen. Similar to what they've done with the Apple Watch, where you can still see information from complications. Even your photograph that's on your home screen, it might be dimmed down, but you can still see it. And this will allow app creators to like create some cool experiences using their complications on the screen, which will update once a second. Extra screen brightness as well is going to allow for new HDR capabilities on the phone. So it's going to be really cool to see what they do with this display. And I'm very curious to see what developers are going to do with this display as well, because it does unlock a new level of uh, creativity when it comes to making apps. The second thing is satellite connectivity. Now this comes with both the iPhone 14 as well as the iPhone 14 Pro, but for the first time, any phone in the world is able to communicate with a satellite and send data. Now, it's very minimal what the iPhone can do with its satellite connectivity. It's mostly an emergency SOS feature, but I can totally see this expanding in the future. And if Apple opens up the APIs for you to be able to access the satellite connectivity, this is going to be a game changer for people who are, you know, in remote locations, on a ship or in the middle of nowhere, still need to communicate. This is going to allow for a whole range of different kinds of functionality, especially if the tech gets better and you're able to send more amounts of data. And now since the iPhone has it, every other phone manufacturer is going to try to include satellite connectivity in their phones as well. You can expect rival companies like Samsung and Huawei to start adopting this technology more. And once it gets more commercialized, it's probably going to get even cheaper and better and more reliable, allowing for global connectivity at some stage. But this is the first step. We now have satellite connectivity on our smartphones. The third thing that Apple did was announce a 48 megapixel camera inside the new iPhone 14 Pro. Now, this might not seem like a big deal because Android phones have had 48 megapixel cameras for a long time. But the way that Apple's doing it is that they're actually giving you a 12 megapixel image using their 48 megapixel camera. They do this using pixel binning and a few other technologies. You can even get a full 48 megapixel image if you choose to shoot in RAW. What I'm more interested in is the capabilities that this unlocks for app developers. If in the photography pipeline API, if developers can access the full 48 megapixel camera, this is going to allow for much better augmented reality by third party developers, as well as photogrammetry. When you take a 3D scan of an object, photogrammetry will stitch all those photographs that you take together to create a 3D object from it. What it's doing in the back is it's taking multiple points of reference in your photograph and then calculating the total dimensions of the object and creating a 3D object. The more points of data it has, the better it's going to be. The same for augmented reality as well. So having more resolution is going to allow for much better and more detailed and more accurate augmented reality and photogrammetry applications. So that's something I'm pretty excited to see what app developers do with that. And the fourth feature, which I would say is really, really cool. I really enjoyed the way that Apple's integrated this is the dynamic island. So they've got rid of the notch and they've replaced it with this dynamic island, which is another kind of notch. It's just a floating notch. This includes the camera and the face ID sensor that we've always had. But now because it's not connected to the top, they can use software features to make it into a multitasking tool. And the way they've implemented this is really cool. So it gives you some additional controls when you're playing audio or when you're setting a timer or things like that. Even your app complications can move up there and it allows you to multitask while you're in different apps. Now it's not true multitasking. You can't have two apps open at the same time. When you click on anything in the dynamic island, it's going to pop up and give you a view. So you can actually listen to your music and browse the web at the same time. Pretty conveniently, you could do the same thing using the drop down from the notification center, but it's just 
visually a lot more exciting as well as much more accessible. It's a single click instead of two clicks. And because third-party developers have access to this, you're gonna see some cool little apps come up over there in the dynamic island in the future, that's for sure. So really excited to see what third-party developers do with the dynamic island. And this is one of the features that is gonna be very difficult for third parties to replicate because of how tightly integrated Apple's hardware and software ecosystem is. So they know that they're gonna have one shape, one size, and they can do all the UI tricks based around their own hardware requirements. It's gonna be harder for Android to copy this feature. It's one of those features when you look at it, it looks really obvious, but I never thought of that. So it's one of those really cool little things that Apple does so well. Those are the main features. There's a couple of interesting things that have come in the iPhone 14 as well, which Apple didn't really elaborate on. So let's get into some of those cool features too. So now every iPhone 14 has Bluetooth 5.3. So Bluetooth 5.3 is a pretty big upgrade over Bluetooth 5, which the iPhone 12 and 13 had. There are a couple of main advantages to it. One is higher quality audio. You can get less compressed audio on Bluetooth 5.3, as well as multi-stream support. So what that means is my 5.3 Bluetooth headphones can be simultaneously connected to my iPhone and my Mac. So it's gonna make you know switching between devices even more smooth and simpler. So looking forward to have Bluetooth 5.3. Unfortunately, my Mac Studio, which I just bought, does not have Bluetooth 5.3, but connectivity between the iPhone and the new AirPods should be amazing, which also have Bluetooth 5.3, by the way. There's also crash detection in the new iPhone. It's a nice safety feature to have. It's gonna automatically contact emergency services if it detects that you've been in a crash. Another cool feature that they did with the camera was steady shot phone gimbal manufacturers are probably uh, really unhappy about this, but it gives you gimbal-like stability on your videos. It does degrade the video quality a little bit. Uh, instead of 4K, you'll get a 2.8K video shot. So it's cropping in and adjusting based on the gyros of your phone but it's so cool that you can get this level of stability from your phone now. And the last little thing of significance I would say is the autofocus selfie camera. They've improved the aperture size of the selfie camera, which means you're gonna get more depth of field, similar to how you see over here. Probably not as good as this. Generally, you need really good autofocus in order to make sure that you're focused on the right object. Because if this camera, for example, was focused on that lamp behind me, I'm gonna be completely out of focus. So. It's really cool that they've implemented that. Those are my thoughts about the iPhone 14 line. I'm definitely picking up an iPhone 14 Pro Max. I'll be doing a comprehensive review of all these features. I don't even know if satellite connectivity is available in Dubai where I live. We'll check it out, we'll test it all out. I'm gonna do a comprehensive review about the video quality coming out of these things as well. I've been rocking the iPhone 11 Pro Max since it came out. It's time for an upgrade and I definitely want to check out some of these new features. Also got the new AirPods Pro 2, by the way. If you guys wanna know more about those, stay tuned. And if you guys like this video, hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to watch more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.